how many of you have had your SSD fail and you've lost all your data or know somebody had that happen? When that happens, I can assure you, you are very upset and very unhappy. So uh, validation is a very key part of being successful today in the marketplace. Oh, are we full screen? Oh, excellent. Thank you. So, so today we're going to talk about what are the problems with validation, the systemic issues that are making things more challenging, and then talk about solutions. So what is the problem? The problem is everybody's busy. How do I scale validation? How do I get more throughput and higher quality through the system? And what are the scaling and market uh, challenges that are driving this? We have more form factors now. Not only do I have two and a half inch M SATA, I got M.2, socket 2, socket 3, got PCIe cars, they're half height, half width, full height, full width. Oh, and don't forget 8639. Oh, and SAT Express, there's no end to this stuff. And more interfaces and protocols. Not only do I have SAS, SATA, guess what? I got ACI, I got MVME. The number of permutations is exploding. In addition to this, there are more test requirements, more stuff around security, more stuff around power. In addition to that, I have more programs I need to get done. And that means I need more equipment, I need more people. And all of a sudden, where does this stuff go? How do I get it? How do I fit it into my lab? How do I manage this? And then the magic question, so what's this going to cost? So how do we deal with these problems? And in addition to that, I got methodology issues. And the methodology issues, I do one thing in RTL, something else in emulation, something else in validation. Quality assurance, I have no scaling. What I do with one form factor, another form factor is different. And then power capabilities, power is becoming a bigger deal. How do I do this if not put the drive on the bench and take a bunch of measurements? How do I truly scale? How do I do deterministic air injection and random? How do I do these things in a scalable fashion across all these interfaces, across all these protocols? And very quickly I ended up with very fragmented tool sets and lots of things for lots of different things. And then I end up with these random failures and they take forever to validate. It's a terrible problem to have. So what are the keys to scaling so we can get out of this problem? First key is our resources need to be highly efficient. There will never be enough people. Thus our people need to be as efficient as possible. You know, we need automation validation suites. They need to scale across my test platforms and across the SSD development cycle. I need to be able to do the same things that RTL, emulation, validation, quality assurance. All these things need to be able to run the same test suites across the same form factors, across all these interfaces. It needs to be able to run in multiple geographies. In addition to that, I need increased capabilities. Power, you know, I need better power control. I need better air injection, recovery. Thermal become a bigger problem. Thermal needs to be a part of the flow that it just scales and works. And I need to be able to debug faster, reduce my cycle times. And lastly, I need to know exactly what it's going to cost so I understand the, where I'm going. Oh, I got great bubbles now. <laughs> so LSI solution is a tool we've developed called Flash Hammer. We talked about the legacy solutions and the issues. So LSI is Flash Hammer. We have automation, test gates, and, and suites. We have uh, a Flash Hammer API. It goes on an OK API. I can run this on desktop systems. I can run this in enclosures. I can run this in thermal systems. You say, that's great. Well, how is this really any better? I see a showcase of equipment all over there. There's lots of different things. So let's look at our scaling metrics and see what this does for us. So let's look at these scaling metrics. Across the development cycle, I can trust all these things rather than doing something different every time. Air injection recovery, debug and reproducibility. I can do these both directed and random in a sustainable fashion that scales. I can do individual traffic control. You look at the picture up here on the top over here. There's Flash Hammer running with a Cadence Palladium box, running RTL simulations. Look down here. There is a rack of, 90, of 96 SATA SSD drives. Now let's talk about our lab space. We've talked about all the problems we had. You know, I've seen lots of different legacy solutions. I've seen a bench space where you've got a PC and a bunch of drives. And then you say, I don't have enough space, so I squeeze all those PCs together and I put them on a shelf. Well, let's compare that. How does that compare to our Flash Hammer infrastructure? So the bottom here, you see a SATA rack. It's a 44U rack with 96 SATA drives. And you see a 44U rack with 256 PCIe drives. 
and you see a thermal box here that I can run SATA or PCIe. So let's look at some metrics here. So if I start up at this table over here, let's see if my pointer works. You can see in the legacy on the bench, I got three drives per square foot. And then I go to the shelf brakes approach, and I have six drives per square foot. I go to my enclosure flash hammer method, I got 16 drives per square foot. And for PCIe, you see that I have the same in the legacy environment as three, and then when I go to PCIe, I got 42 drives per square foot for a density. And then, let's look at power. Uh, I don't know how to get this. So if you look at power, one of the, so I have 50 watts per drive for infrastructure power in the legacy bench. When you go to the shelf, guess what? Your infrastructure power has not changed. You just squeezed all the PCs together. You still have 50 watts per drive of infrastructure power. If you compare that to the flash hammer solution, where for SATA I have 7.3 watts of power for my infrastructure. Or in PCIe, I have 2.1 watts of power for my infrastructure to drive all this stuff. And then you can also look over here in the far right for thermal. You see, I have 17 drives per square foot for thermal, which, as you can see, is much higher than if you do a shelf-based solution. And the same thing for PCIe, the density is much higher. So if you calculate all these numbers out, you come up with, you, get a, you can have as much as a 14x lab density improvement. What that means is, guess what? I can now fit everything in my lab. And I can have up to a 25x power density improvement in my lab. So now I can fit everything in my lab. So now let's talk about cost here. One of the issues is how, what's it cost to do all these new programs and how do you do this? Now I have a very deterministic way to calculate my cost. You can tell me how many drives you want to test, and I can just go on the graph and I can tell you this is what it's going to cost, or you can say this is how much money you have to spend, and I can tell you this is exactly how many drives I can test with that amount of money. So now, let's look at this in summary. How does this all stack up? I can use this across the entire SSD development cycle. I can do the form factors, the interfaces, the protocols, the automation, power. I can now take power measurements in an automated fa fashion across all my ducts. I got individual traffic control, air injection reproducibility. I can do this random. I can do it directed. Now, look at my validation resource challenges. My people are now efficient. In addition to that, my labs and equipment, it fits. In addition to that, I can know what my costs are going to be. I can do this across the geographies. And now, adding new form factors is a non-issue. It just all scales and works. New protocols, interfaces, with all this increase that's happening, is not a problem because all my resources have been pooled together to scale across all this. All my test, increased test requirements now are fine because I can take my resources, I can generate stuff around those requirements, and it'll scale across all these things. So this is the LSI solution for validation, and currently we are considering enabling our customers with this capability. Thank you.